everybody, my friends, how you doing? Welcome to the live stream. I'll give another minute or two for people to check in. I ha say hi, hi to a few of you. Hi, Misano, Dan, how you doing? Back again. Stickmaster, hello. If you guys want to check in and say hi, I'll give you a shout out. Starting off with some flute today. Hi, Juan. Hello to Lufti747. Thank you very much. Stephanie and Smiley, hello. Oh. Avari says that you are my biggest fan. That's nice. Hi, Denise and Charles. All right. So welcome to, uh, to our live stream this week, everybody. Uh, we're here uh, again. It's a snowy day. Um, it's snowing here in southeastern Pennsylvania. And uh, we're kind of, I'm hoping for, well, I'm not hoping for a snow day tomorrow because I don't want to miss the whole day. But a, uh, a two-hour delay would be nice. Is anyone else out there? Is it snowing where, where you live? Uh, it's snowing out here where I live. Stickmaster says it's snowing where, where you are. Yeah, so we'll see. I mean, the snow is supposed to last, um, I think, through like the middle of the night, and then it's supposed to turn into rain. So we'll see. I think, I think we're, we're pretty much guaranteed a two-hour delay. I, I like my two-hour delays. They give, you, give us a nice chance to sleep in, uh, but uh, we don't have to miss a day and add on a day to the summer. So, um, welcome everybody to our live stream. Uh, say hi to Dennis. Hi, Dennis. Thank you for being here again. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, we got Dennis on, on uh, kind of looking at all your comments, and Dennis is going to help me, as always, with uh, if there are some qu good questions coming through that I'm missing. Of course, I can't get to all your questions. I really wish I could, but uh, it's so great to have so many of you watching. Uh, but I can't always get to all your questions. But let's let's jump right in here. I want to tell you uh, some things that I, I did this week. Of course, last week we had our solo fest uh, at our school, and that was a, a big success. I was telling you about that last week. Um, if you are following me on Instagram, all right, so uh, if you're following me on Instagram, at Dr. Selfridge, I posted a short little video of uh, something I did yesterday. I'm, I have a new video coming out with a student of mine at the high school who is not only a trumpet player, I know him as a trumpet player in the band, but he plays uh, traditional Indian classical music and he plays this Indian drum called a mrind mrindingam. I think I'm, I'm remembering the name correctly. And we did a really cool interview session. We had a little jam session. So that video should be coming up soon. Uh, if you're not already, if you could subscribe or follow me on Instagram at Dr. Selfridge, and uh, I'll give you a shout out here on the live stream if I see your, uh, your, uh, your follow come up on my screen here. So um, let's jump into some questions. Let's see. Uh, right here, Kendall says, why can't I play a high note on my clarinet? So um, probably Kendall, any, anyone out there, including Kendall, if you're having trouble with your high notes on clarinet, it's probably uh, let's see, three reasons. Um, it could be your reed. Probably the number one reason is either your embouchure. Thank you, Preston, for following me on Instagram. It's either your embouchure needs to be firm and correct. Your air needs to be strong. Your reed needs to be str uh, the correct uh, strength. So if you're playing on a, a soft reed, thank you, Nico Sharks, for subscribing. Um, if you're playing on a softer reed, you might need to up your reed strength. So good reed, good embouchure, big breath, and then make sure you're covering the holes correctly on your clarinet. So here's my few steps to get a really good high note on clarinet. First, you get a really strong low note. That's a C. And then you simply tap the register key with the tip of your thumb and make sure you don't move your hands at all. So. That is how you start practicing your upper register. Thank you, Antinawos, for subscribing. Um, let's see. 
differences between the key signatures. Um, so I was just talking about this in my uh, music theory class. Who out there has heard of the circle of fourths or the circle of fifths? Can anyone tell me, first of all, hands up if you've heard of the circle of fourths, and then tell me if you can, ex can anyone explain what it is? Baritone has heard of it. Smiley has heard of the circle, and Daniela and Tracy. And Animal has not heard of it, Animal Lover. So Clarinet 101 doesn't know what that is. Ty has heard of it. Can anyone explain? Puppet Master, I, I play mostly woodwind instruments, but I also play brass instruments uh, and percussion, but I'm not as good at those. I'm better at the woodwinds. Uh, thank you, Ethan, for, for following me on, on Instagram. So can anyone explain? Thank you, Jaheed, for the follow. Can anyone explain what a circle of fourths is? I'm going to draw one for you. Okay. All right. What? It's a thing to help reading sharps and flats easier by putting it in numerical order. Baritone saxophone. You are really on the right track. First, I'm going to draw a circle. Okay. And I, I need a little help drawing a circle because I'm not the best circle drawer. I'm going to draw a circle. There's my circle. It's a little messy. And I'm going to do all the notes of that exist. All the notes in the chromatic scale, I'm going to go around the circle. I'm going to start with C on top. And then I'm going to go, like a clock, I'm going to go up in perfect fourths. Does anyone know what comes after C if I'm going in perfect fourths? What's four notes higher? Count C as one and go C, D, E, F is the answer. Red Clay got it. Okay, so we have F. Now we're going to go around in perfect fourths. Perfect fourth higher than F. Anyone? Anyone? Baritone, got it. B flat. What comes next after B flat in the circle of fourths? Okay, baritone's on it. I'm just going to finish B flat. E flat, A flat, D flat. Then we have G flat at the bottom. Does anyone know what the other name for G flat is? G flat has two names. Does anyone know what the other name for G flat is? No. It's a sharp name. Okay, so every, good, Red Clay Beginner Band got it. Every note that has a flat, you can give it a different, it has two names, it has a sharp name too. So F sharp, boom. Now we're going to go all the way around B, E, A, D, G. There's our circle of fourths. All right, there's 12 different notes in the chromatic scale, okay? And this is a really good tool for remembering your key signatures because you can go like this. C has zero flats and sharps. F has one flat. B flat has two flats. And you can go all the way around with the number of flats on this side, and then the number of sharps on this side. One sharp, two sharp, three sharp, four, five. So this, if, if you've never heard of this before, it might be confusing, but it's a really cool thing that is, you should ask your music teacher about it. Okay, boom. Um, Amelia says, my music teacher showed us one of your videos and it changed your life. That's really nice. Uh, Dennis, uh, you want to chime in here with anything you've seen coming through? Yeah, uh, someone wants to know uh, how to do low notes fast on a clarinet. As in, and generally, there's been a couple of things talking about. Hi, Francesco. Uh, fast pieces. How to do, how to make the notes faster? I guess for uh, uh, novices and things that becomes a challenge. <clears throat> so a few people have been asking about how to play fast, basically how to play fast notes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Ducky, for the follow. Um, so, someone asked about playing f Sizu Salman is watching from Iraq. That's really cool. Hello. Um, uh, someone was asking about fast notes on the clarinet and the low notes. Really, the answer is the same for every instrument. It doesn't matter what instrument you play. If you want to play fast, you have to play it very slowly and make sure you're getting it exactly accurately with your fingers, your timing, uh, and your notes, and all that stuff. So 
slow it s super slow, and then you gradually increase the tempo with the metronome. That's the only way to do it. There's no shortcut to playing fast. You, you slow it way down until you can play it perfectly on beat. And then I follow the rule of threes for practicing with a metronome. So the rule of threes is, if, does anyone know the rule of threes practicing with a metronome? If you play it correctly three times in a row, you can speed up the metronome a few clicks. Uh, and you have to try to get it correctly three times in a row and you can speed up more. If you make a mistake three times in a row, that means that metronome is too fast for you. You need to slow it down a little bit. You need to get it correctly exactly right and then gradually speed it up. So that's the answer for that. That's a good question. Um, so I'm gonna jump on some more questions here. How do you play, Jaden says, how do you play low notes on Barry without sounding bad? Um, low notes on saxophones, again, good embouchure, O. Think of an O embouchure, have a good read, make a good sound on the middle of the saxophone. I'll demonstrate on tenor. I don't have a Barry. Here's my tenor. Hi, Nicholas. So if you're getting a good open sound, same for Barry sax. You're getting a good open sound in the middle. As you go down the notes, step by step. As you go lower, you have to keep the inside of your mouth open like I imagine you have, I like to imagine there's a ping pong ball or a golf ball on my tongue. So say all. And imagine there's a ping pong ball on your tongue and it's getting a little bigger as you go lower. That's how you play low notes on any saxophone. Okay. Uh, Marissa, can you tell me what reed I'm supposed to be playing on? Seventh grade clarinet? I would say Van Doren. Um, two and a half, maybe a three depending on how advanced you are. Somewhere around a two and a half or a three. Uh, Dennis, you want to uh, jump in with a, a question here? Yeah, I, yeah, somebody asked how to make a, it's actually Daniel Rigo wants to know how to make a sax lick. How to make a sax what? Lick, do a lick on the sax. Oh, oh. Now, uh, here's the question. All right, so are you talking about how to make any lick on the saxophone? Or you might be referring to, uh, Dennis, there's this, uh, there's this uh, uh, funny inside joke that, that goes around um, musicians about this, this one particular musical phrase that's called the lick. And it's kind of a, kind of a funny reference. So the, if you're talking about the lick, that's when you play, right? So that is when you play, take a major scale, any major scale, start on the second note, okay? So I'm using a G major scale. And I'm starting on A. And I'm just going one, two, three, four, five. Do, 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 three, one, two. So a lot of times when you're coming up with musical phrases, it's good to name the scale degrees. So I'm going Two, three, four, five, three, one, two. I could do that in another, uh, another key, C major. I'm gonna start on D. So Red Clay Beginner Band is asking, why is that called the lick? It's just kind of a joke that has come out like a meme because it's, it's a common phrase in a lot of jazz soloists. And so someone made a video on YouTube where they took out every example of someone playing the, that particular phrase in a jazz solo, and there's like 35 examples. So it's just kind of a funny thing. Um, but it's a good thing, it's a good phrase to know. So if I start on, if I'm in C major, I start on D. I'll show you my fingers, uh, sort of. I have to back up a little bit to really show you. Uh, I could do it in the key of um, B flat, I'll start on a C. Uh, I could do it in F, and I'll start on a G. Okay, so that is the the lick. All right, a lot of people are asking for clarinet. 
So, here's my clarinet. Any particular um, requests on clarinet, I'll play something on the clarinet. Any requests on clarinet? Star Wars. There's a little bit of clarinet. Despacito. Um, oh, someone asked for a uh, Seven Nation Army. Some of you asked for uh, the opening of uh, Rhapsody in Blue. So if you play the clarinet, you should definitely do some research on George Gershwin Rhapsody in Blue. There's a really famous uh, clarinet solo at the beginning, which starts on a low G trill. Starts like that. And then it goes up all the way up the clarinet like a glissando. And you have to kind of do your embouchure to make it a gradual glissando up to a high C. So it's like this. Ah, oh, that wasn't so good. <laughs> Here you have to kind of you have to kind of pull your lip your jaw down to get that scooping sound. So, Dennis, what do you see? Uh, I have, uh, from Sam. He wants to know learn, how do you learn to do the A B C notation. Says I only know how to read the six line notation. Hmm. Uh, I'm not sure what he's referring to. Unless you're talk maybe he's talking about guitar tab. Um, okay. Yeah, so there's there's this thing called tab, which is a sort of uh, graphical representation of what uh, a, a guitar neck looks like. Um, so if that's what you've learned, if you're trying to get to the five line four space uh, staff, basically uh, you can Google um, reading notes on the staff, and you want to. For guitar, if you're doing guitar, you'd want to read what's called treble clef. So it's the G clef, and then you'd have to learn the names of the lines. So here's the five. A lot of times you can use something your hand to demonstrate the staff. Bottom line, next line, next line, next line, next line, and then the space notes are in here. Okay. So if you're in treble clef, this would be E. The bottom line is E, and then you simply go up the musical alphabet. So what comes after E in the musical alphabet? F in the space, G on the line. Now in our musical alphabet, we don't have H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. We go from G back to A here. A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's a start for you on that. Um, a flat and B flat notes flute lesson, Ashley. Ashley, quick lesson for you, all right? A flat is you play a G, thumb, one, two, three, that's your G, right? Add this pinky right here, that's an A flat. Sometimes you might call it a G sharp, but it's the same thing. Okay, Amanda says, thanks to a great friend for introducing my channel. Thank you, Amanda, for that very nice comment. Now, B flat is thumb, first finger, first finger. Thumb, first finger, first finger. B flat on the flute. Both of those notes, if you want to play them high, you make your lips, your aperture smaller, push your lips out a little bit. There we go. Um, uh, Ashley is requesting Star Spangled Banner on the flute. Okay, that's kind of a long song, but I'll play the beginning of it for you. Okay, here's the beginning. Hi Zohabe, hi Annie Pitt. So 
So there's the first part of the Star Spangled Banner. Um, Rowan is asking, struggling to understand 6, 8, and 3, 4. Okay, ready? 6, 8, and 3, 4. 6, 8 is... So when you're doing a time signature, I'll take my little, my little notepad here. 6, 8. 6, 8 means... There are six, it means there are six eighth notes in every measure. And in six eight, usually they're, they're grouped two groups of three. Ba, 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 So six eight is a feeling of two big beats. One, two, one, two. And then inside those two big beats, there's three little beats. Ba, 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 ba. Now, so... 3-4 is kind of like the opposite. 3-4 is there are three quarter notes in every measure. 3-4, three, three quarter notes, okay? And that means uh, that you have three big beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. But the little beats are in twos. One and two and three and one and two and three and. So that's how six, eight and three, four are different. Hope that made sense. Uh, Dennis. Yes, I have a. Um, so is the flute close to figuring on the alto sax? Yeah, flute and alto sax are very similar. As a matter of fact, all of the instruments, all of the instruments that have keys, like a, a woodwind, are very similar, in that they've got six main buttons, just like a recorder. B A G F E D, right? And it's <laughs> and it's the same for alto sax. B A G F E D. It's the same for tenor sax. <laughs> it's the same for all the woodwind instruments. So that is your answer of our flute and alto sax uh, similar in fingerings. I need to give a special shout out to all my friends in the Annie Pitt Orchestra. So I have some students and some friends who are playing right now. I guess you guys are having a rehearsal. I guess you went out in the snow. So make sure you drive home safely. Uh, so I, I wanna say hi to all my friends who are playing in the Pitt Orchestra for Annie at Garnet Valley. Um, dip, ba -da -bop, ba -da -bop, bop, bop. Uh, yes, Joey says they're having a rehearsal. You guys are hardcore. <laughs> okay, um, some quick Questions? We have about seven minutes left. Uh, yeah, the, there's somebody, Steve, somebody asked about, uh, she's been asked to play the French horn, and she wants to know what's the difference between the French horn and the trumpet. Okay, so someone uh, asked about, uh, your director asked you to switch to French horn from trumpet. This is very common. So first I'll just answer your question. French horn and trumpet are very similar. Uh, I see your question about cut time, the cheddar. Uh, I'm gonna, Dennis. I'm gonna try to remember to, to uh, answer that question about cut time. Got it. So here is our three valves for trumpet. A French horn has three valves too. Um, so when you're switching from trumpet to French horn, uh, as long as you know your trumpet fingerings in your upper register. So the low notes, the low register notes on the horn are the same as the upper register notes of the trumpet. So. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? Um, a lot of notes on French horn are open and one. So if you guess one of those, you're usually a 50% chance of being correct. Uh, Red Clay Beginner Band says the French horn is, a, it is harder, it's a little bit harder, because you, you have to be better at hearing your notes. Um, cut time. Okay, here's a really quick and I see some of you answering each other's questions. That's really awesome. I appreciate that. Keep uh, having those great conversations in the chat. That's wonderful. So cut time. Here's my quick explanation of cut time. Ready? F cut time is just 4-4. Four, four. We're all used to 4-4. Four, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Cut time is simply a way of playing music when 4-4 four, four gets so fast. Say you're speeding up your tempo. Uh, I'm trying to think of a song. Let's do Mary Had a Little Lamb. 
Dun, 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 dun. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, say you wanted to play that really fast. You'd speed up. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. You're going this fast. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, eventually, it gets so fast that it doesn't make sense to conduct or tap your toe. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That will tire your, your foot out and it will tire out the conductor. So what we do at a certain point, it makes more sense to simply tap your toe half the amount of times. So instead of Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, we go Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. So whenever I get confused by cut time, I just remember that you can just think of it as a really fast 4-4 four, four, and it's exactly the same, okay? So you can think one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, one, two. I hope that helped and it wasn't confusing. How about some shout outs? Um, <laughs> how about some shout outs of where you all are watching from? All right, so give me some shout outs of where you're watching from. I'll say hello to you, some of you guys if I haven't shouted you out yet. You're welcome, Cheddar. Um, Roan is in Scotland. Hello, Alyssa's in Texas. Uh, Newark, Delaware, Red Clay, New York City. Oh, it's going fast now. Brian's in Phoenix. Monica is at home. That's good. That's where I am. Lily is in Japan. Michael is in San Bruno, California. Columbia, Dan, Rick, Texas. Uh, Emily is in Springfield. And M Masano is in Michigan, Kansas City. Corey Manzano is in Pennsylvania. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, Nicholas is in Illinois. Now, you guys are watching my live stream. Are you, like, my, I, wanna, I need to ask my friends in the Annie Pit. You're watching my live stream. Are you not paying attention, or, or are you guys on a break? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but thank Steve, you. I have, I have a, Steve, I have a question that, that ties into what you just did. Yeah. Uh, it says, what do you do when you, um, excuse me, what do you do if you can't watch the live feed? That is like with their questions, I, I suppose it's to email them. Where do they email them and how do they deal with that? Oh. This was from somebody from, uh, this was from somebody from Australia. Oh, because it's probably not a convenient yeah. time. Right. Um, so you can comment on my, uh, my video. So what I'll do is if, if you have a question, if you wanted to watch a live stream and you couldn't make it, comment on this video. All my live streams, as soon as they're done, they become just a video on my channel. So you could comment on the video with your question uh, and I will answer your question uh, in my next live stream. How's that sound? That works. That'll work. I'll, I'll watch for, uh, I'll watch for your, your comments. So we have about uh, James Bondus is asking uh, how to remove a stuck trumpet mouthpiece. Bring it to your band director. All right. Don't let your parents try to put any, uh, any uh, pliers or anything on it. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Um, I have one more general question. Yes. It is from, what do you do when you mess up on a solo performance? Oh, what do you do? Okay, that, that question, I would like my friends in the, uh, in the comments to give suggestions. What should you do if you make a mistake it, whether it's a solo or whether you're in playing in an ensemble, it's the answer is the same. What do you think? What do you guys think you should do if you? Yes, Amanda says keep moving. Exactly right. You and Lou Castrophe says act like it wasn't a mistake. A lot of you are saying keep playing. Dan says that. Um, Red Clay Beginner Band says make a mental note to not mess that part up again. Dan Castro says, practice harder. Yeah, when you get home, practice harder. Um, but the big thing is you, you can't let it totally ruffle your feathers and mess you up. You can't stop. You have to keep going. And if you're playing a solo with a piano accompaniment, a good piano accompanist will be able to, to, to stay with you if you jump a couple of notes. Uh, if you're playing in an ensemble, you can't make a face like, darn, I messed up. You have to just kind of act like nothing happened and keep going because a lot of the time, a lot of people in the audience won't even notice that you made a mistake if you cover it well and you just keep calm and keep going, okay? That's a lot of you are getting the right answer there. So uh, we, 
We are, yes, a lot of you are making those, those good comments. So we are at just about the 30 minute mark and uh, that is my cue to, uh, to sign off. So folks, I uh, want to thank you so much for, uh, for um, tuning in. Remember uh, to follow me on Instagram, Dr. Selfridge. If you do Twitter, I'm Dr. Selfridge and Facebook. Make sure you, you, uh, you follow me there. Uh, I give you some behind the scenes things of what my week is like when I'm at school. So thank you so much guys for watching. Make sure you're practicing at, uh, at home this week uh, and uh, get your questions together for next week. I'll be back again, uh, ready for another live stream. So thank you, Dennis, for being with us again. No problem. Always great having you here. Uh, so thanks guys for being here and I will see you